I'm Jesse Cole, the owner of the Savannah Bananas, and it's time we all stop standing still and start standing out and go create some fans. Awesome. Jesse, congrats on the new book, man. This is Thanks. awesome. I'm so excited for you. The first one was really good. This one's even better. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this book and uh, two years in the making and uh, a lot of stories. So I appreciate the support. Yeah, absolutely, man. Tons of stories. So I wore my, my baseball shirt today because I'm a big baseball fan. But I got to tell you, man, I saw a game last year and it doesn't look like any baseball game I've ever seen before. Is that on purpose? <laughs> I think it's very uh, completely intentional. The Savannah Bananas, we try to be unlike any baseball team uh, because baseball's challenged. It's to many long, slow and boring. So we want to be the opposite of that. So nonstop entertainment and fun. And uh, we get to have fun every single day with a sold out crowd and never imagined that in my life. Yeah, that's that's crazy, man. Like there's a there's a waiting list to get tickets, which is crazy. I mean, I see the Oakland A's. I don't think they draw as many fans as you guys do in Savannah, man. Well, uh, Major League teams do a lot of things right, and they're the, the top baseball talent in the world. We're just these uh, guys who put on a circus. And, yes, our wait list just hit 50,000 for tickets, which is just unbelievable. 50,000 for yeah, a 50, wait list? Say, yep. Wow. And, and is that season tickets or for one ticket or what? No, that's just to get tickets to come to a game. Holy just to get crap. To a game. Yeah. My gosh, that's incredible. So, wow. So – we can talk about the present and the future in a bit, man, but I gotta take me back, take us all back, right? To, to when you came up with this idea. Cause as I'm reading the book, I'm like, this is really unlikely. There's no way this is gonna work. And I know that it did. I mean, I got to attend a game last year. So take us back to when you bought the team. Like what the heck were you thinking, man, buying a baseball team? You know, well, thanks. It started 10 years of, you know, experimenting as a general manager of a baseball team, first with a team in North Carolina. And then my wife and I said, let's take the next big step. And we went to Savannah, Georgia, and uh, went over a million dollars in debt, buying a baseball team and putting money in. And, uh, you know, we were scared when we first came in. And I think a lot of times, Phil, when people go into businesses, they, they get into something and sometimes they don't take chances because, you know, they, they want to fit in. They want to try to make sure that they're doing the right thing. They're overthinking instead of overdoing. And so we just literally try to market like everyone else, do social media like everyone else, sell like everyone else. I wasn't wearing the yellow tux. And we only sold a handful of tickets. And literally by January of 2016, we had overdrafted our account. We we're about to miss payroll. And uh, my wife and I had to sell our house, empty our savings account. We're sleeping on an airbed. And that was just six and a half years ago. And uh, we had to dramatically do things differently if we wanted to have dramatic results. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So everything is different <laughs> from the website to the parking lot. So let's talk about that experience from the parking lot in because that's so fascinating. I didn't get to see that, but I've watched videos because we were running late. We got stuck in traffic and ended up an hour and a half late uh, to the game, but we did catch the game. The game was great, but talk to me about the parade and what the heck is behind that thought. It's uh, inspired by Walt Disney. So, you know, one of my biggest mentors, uh, you know, I never got to meet, obviously, but I, I read every book about him and the experience. And I'm fascinated by people and leaders that can keep an experience going long after they're gone, because that means it needs to be really built into the DNA of a company. And so I'm fascinated by that. So Walt Disney obviously did a tremendous job with that. And so the mindset for him was... We're, we're, Disneyland is a living, breathing thing. It'll never be complete. We will always plus the show and plus the experience. And I don't know if you got to the end of the book, but there's a bonus plus in there. But what I, I really try to do is look at every single part of the experience and, and go into our North Star of what's fans first and what is making baseball fun and how to plus it. So the March <clears throat> that you mentioned, you know, most people just come to a ballpark probably for you because you came in late. The game was already shown. We we're already using all of our other stages, not our front stage. You run in, you go into the ballpark and you find your seat, you get your food, et cetera. That's boring. That's not fans first. So while fans are lining up and which now is becoming in the thousands before games, we have our entire pep band, our break dancing coaches, our player on stilts, our uh, banana nanas, our man nanas, our mascot, everyone. We come out and do choreographed dances, get the whole crowd dancing, then high five every single fan, then greet them. Then we have confetti streamers. We make it into a celebration because that's how we want you to start. That's the starting, uh, the first impression. And so we, we really look at that. And in each game, we try to plus it. What's one new thing we can add to the march? What's one new thing we can add to the entrance? And I think that's what uh, hopefully keeps fans coming back for more. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, I'd love to catch another game for sure, man. It was so much fun. I have people on Facebook like, oh, I want to go to a game, but I can't get tickets. So I just tell them to keep trying. 
So that's and, so you, and, you, and Phil, you had to see a regular game too because you didn't get to see Annabelle, right? You had to see a regular nine inning game. That's right. So you know that was another area of plusing because baseball is still too long, too slow, too boring. So we developed banana ball, a two hour timed game, you know, where batters can't step out of the batter's box and batters can steal first and the fans catch a foul ball for an out. So that's what we've been playing the last two months. And 98 percent of our fans stay till the end of the game. And uh, it doesn't happen anywhere else because fans don't want to miss anything. And so that's another area of plusing and just looking at a friction point and trying to do the exact opposite. Yeah, well, that's that was one of the interesting ideas that you had in your book. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed it. The friction, you know, to try to get friction free, right? Remove as much friction as you can. So talk about that, Jesse, and where, where that idea came from and some maybe some recent friction that you've removed. Oh, geez, every day we're finding friction. You know, I think you need to be a friction fighter, as I talk about in the book. So, you know, again, going back to Walt Disney, you know, he used to he had an apartment above Disneyland and he used to go and be undercover. Just like we've seen the show Undercover Boss, but he would go undercover as a guest and he would go, you know, walk with walk with the guests. He would eat with the guests. He'd get on rides. And he said this. He said, whenever I go on a ride, I'm always asking what's wrong with this thing and how can it be improved? Now, to many, that may seem a negative, pessimistic way of looking at things. To me, I see that as a way of making things amazing. And so he does that. So every game we do the same thing. We go undercover. We park with the fans, we walk in with the fans, we sit with the fans, we eat with the fans, and most importantly, listen to the fans. And not just listening with our eyes, we listen to try to see how do they react? How do they do things? What are they saying? And when you hear all that, then you find the friction pretty easily. Um, And most people, what they're doing is they're just looking for the the, the great things. We're looking for things on how do we make them great. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's friction nonstop. I mean, you know, there was friction Uh, in walks in baseball. That's why we turned it into a sprint in the banana ball. And so the the rule is a walk is literally you just walk to first. It's the most boring play in sports. And we turn into a sprint where the hitter takes off full speed, can go to as many bases as he wants, while the position team has to throw the ball to every single guy in the field before it's live. And then that became a friction point because it was automatic double, automatic triple. So then our coach, Eric Burns, worked on a way to get everyone to come in together and do this weave and make it almost magical that they could get a guy out at second because it became too boring because the same thing was happening. So that was a friction. So you keep attacking friction until you create something that's truly special. Wow. So Eric Burns, is that former pro ball player, Eric Burns, that played for the A's? And- yeah, we're the o- Oakland A's all-time greats. Yeah, he's our, he's our, he's our head coach for our, uh, our pro team. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing, man. So, so is it the fans first mentality that attracts someone like an Eric Burns, someone that, you know, loves traditional baseball, obviously, but now is playing banana ball. I mean, how how does that work, man? Well, yeah, you think about it. So Bill Lee pitched for us. Uh, Johnny Gomes played for us. Jake Peavy pitched with his gold glove for us this summer, this, this tour. So yeah, I think, I think people realize what's going on with the game. And, you know, we're so fortunate as from sleeping on the airbed six years ago, I mean, we have 2.5 million TikTok followers, which is almost 2 million more than any major league baseball team. So when you think about that, we have a young audience that is looking for something fast. And we are now in that TikTok world. We can get entertainment at our fingertips, left and right. Yet baseball games have gotten longer for seven straight years. And the average baseball game is over three hours and 12 minutes long. Yet you tell me how many movies are over three hours long. They don't, it doesn't happen that way. And so the way is the world is getting faster, but baseball is getting slower. So guys like Bernsey and Jake Peavy and uh, Johnny Bench, who joined us this summer uh, or this tour. I mean, all these guys who joined us, they're like, "Ooh, this is something we haven't seen before. This could be the way of the future. And I, I take it as a compliment. I don't think baseball, Major League Baseball is ever going to have fans catch a foul ball for an out. Like, that's just not going to happen. It would be amazing. There'd be a lot more gloves in, in the audience with fans, a lot more kids coming, but they won't do it. But we're not trying to compete with Major League Baseball. We compete against ourselves to try to create the best possible experience for fans and try to make baseball as fun as it can possibly be. When you compete against yourself, you start attracting fans. And yes, uh, we've attracted a lot of other big league names that people uh, will be hearing in the next year as well. Wow. That's incredible, man. And what I love is that it is non-traditional. And again, I, I, I know Bob Costas, but I'm certainly a bit of a baseball purist. Like I love the hit and run. I love the double switch. Do you love, do you love the like bunt? That. Yeah, the bunt, right? I mean, all that stuff. You know, if you bunt in banana ball, you're thrown out of the game. There's no bunting. So wow. I'm sorry. I just I really upset you, but you literally, literally throw you out of the game. But that's a whole other thing. So we're not great for purists. I'm glad that we're actually talking because purists mostly, they don't, they don't like us. Yeah. It, well, and I was just going to say, right, like I, I do love that. That being said, you do ha- – it's, it's different. I would absolutely say – I mean, the title of your book is right on, man. It is – fans first because if i bring my mom to the game who is not a purist who doesn't know the four six three double play she's still like holy crap man that's really fun 
and she gets to eat as much as she wants. So what, what's that, man? How, how do you make any money if you're going to feed a guy like me, you know, six hamburgers and uh, three, so three pops. So you're referring to in Savannah. So every single game in Savannah is, is all inclusive. All your burgers, hot dogs, chicken sandwiches, soda, water, popcorn, dessert. I'm going to ask this, Phil, you came to game. Uh, do you remember what your ticket fees were when you, when you bought the ticket from us? Fees, no fees. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you remember, uh, what about your taxes? When, or when you bought, did you buy a drink? Did you buy anything premium? Like obviously all your food was included, but did you buy anything else? Do you remember how much taxes you paid? Uh, I don't think we paid taxes. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the fans first mentality. It's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy. We will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in fans taxes this year. There's not one sports team crazy enough in the country or the world to do that. If you buy a ticket, you buy food, you buy merchandise. If a $30 shirt, it's $33.75 with taxes, whatever it is. Or if you're getting it, buying it online, then you pay your $7 shipping, then that, et cetera. A $25 shirt for us is a $25 shirt. And we package it in a yellow custom box or yellow custom envelope with a free koozie and a free decal with yellow tissue paper. And we send it with a letter. It doesn't make any sense. But it does when you know your pure goal, your only goal is not how do you create more revenue, it's how do you create more fans. And if you focus on long-term fans over short-term profits, the profits will eventually catch up. The money will take care of itself because you're creating fans. And that's more powerful than anything else in business. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's, that's so, uh, you know, it's counterintuitive, but when you say it out loud, right, if I get fans, they're going to tell everybody about it. They're, they're going to do that. So, 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 so let's go this, Bill. I want to dive in this for a second. So how much money do you think we spend on marketing? Like, like, you know, like all the marketing, social media, TV, radio, oh, digital, gosh. like, what do you, what do you, like, or what percentage, or if you want to just guess. Oh, like we, I don't know what, so let's see, percentage, probably what, 20%, 30%? Yeah, we spend $0 on marketing. So 0%. We spend zero. So zero. we don't spend any outside advertising at all. And so you want to talk about the power of fans, we invest everything in the experience. So when we go on tour, the Harlem Globetrotters example, who we get compared to, which is really kind, but they travel with 30 people. We travel with 120. We bring the pep band, the male cheerleading team, the break dancing coaches, all of the characters, guys on stilts, uh, tricksters, magicians, uh, the dancing umpires. We invest so much in the experience to wow every single person that comes into the ballpark, that they're blown away that when they leave the ballpark, they say the three words, which I mentioned earlier in the book, you wouldn't believe. And that's the most powerful form of marketing. Yeah, say word of mouth. I believe you wouldn't believe is even more powerful than that. Someone comes to you, Phil, you wouldn't believe I went to the Bananas game and what they did during the game. You wouldn't believe my daughter was handed a rose from one of the players. You wouldn't believe my six-year-old son, when he asked one of the players for the autograph, they got down to a knee and say, only if I can have yours. And my six-year-old son signed a player's jersey on the Bananas. You wouldn't believe. And when you create those moments, you don't need to spend any dollars on marketing. So you invest in all those extra expenses, like paying people's taxes, like making sure there's no fees, making sure every ticket's all inclusive in Savannah, because that creates fans, which gives your team purpose, gives everyone that we're doing this a purpose and pride in what we do. And it makes it worth it to keep working hard to create those experiences. So, uh, okay. So let's, if we could, let's talk a little bit about dollars, Jesse. I mean, you're not sleeping on an airbed anymore. This is profitable now. Yes. <laughs> We're very fortunate. I mean, we're doing hundreds and some days even thousands of merchandise orders every single day. We don't do less than 100 orders plus a day. So m merchandise alone has become a multi, multi-million dollar business. And I don't like talking about dollars. I'm like Walt Disney. Money doesn't excite me. Ideas excite me. That's what Walt Disney said. I'm the same thing. I like talking about ideas more than anything. But yeah, the money takes care of itself. Now, is it, do we have the best margins in the world? You better believe now. But, you know, fortunately, we've sold out every single game. Um, you know, the wait list is huge and the merchandise is more than we could ever imagine. And so, and I think, think about that, whether you're a baseball team or whether you're doing anything, do you have a brand that people want to wear? So people want to wear our lip because they want to start, Oh, do you know the bananas? I know the bananas. Oh, this is what they do. I saw them this. It's like grateful dead. Grateful dead did more merchandise than anybody. Grateful dead had a similar model. I've learned a lot from them. And so you think about that Yeti is a cooler brand yet. People wear their hats. So if people like your brand, are you willing to wear merchandise? So they are doing all of our marketing, all of our fans every single day, but they're actually paying to do the marketing for us because they believe in who we are because we are fans first through and through. That's incredible, man. That's really cool. So, so real quick, speaking of fans, we got a couple that are on here. Sue Gresham says she went to Kansas City from Milwaukee uh, to just see the show. And she says she's a fan of both of us, Jesse. I don't know how I awesome. get included with you, but that's an honor. Thank you, Sue. And uh, Chad Lawson says that he missed 
the banana the the trip because they were buying and selling a house at the same time. So they're insane. So sorry, Chad yeah. and Ruth, that you missed. And then Danny Jacobson says that he's a huge fan. He's going to watch the replay later. That's awesome. So even here, Jesse, you've got fans, man. You've got folks that love you. So so talk to me about like the volume of fan mail that you've got to get. And and you say in the book that you read this stuff, man, like this got away more than you do, bro. Oh man. I, I, that's kind of you to say, but no, it's not that crazy. Uh, I, I'm very humbled that I receive, you know, letters and packages and, you know, I got yellow slippers yesterday and gear and yellow banana cufflings and people send some very nice things to me, which means a lot. But yeah, I, I think the reality is I started this in 2016. And as crazy as it sounds, this fan idea and the yellow tuxedo and all the wild things we do, which we haven't even really talked too much about. But the reality is uh, one of the best ways to create fans is, is a simple thank you. And in 2016, I started the thank you experiment, writing a thank you letter every single day. And it changed my life sent it to coaches, teachers, entrepreneurs, uh, authors, just people in my life, family members. And uh, it's weird, but I say it might be the most selfish thing I do because of the way I feel when I start my morning by writing a thank you letter, knowing someone's going to get that and hopefully make an impact on their day. So uh, I am definitely humbled and flattered by when people send me letters and packages, but I, I get as much joy when I'm able to send that to someone else. Wow. That's cool, man. So let's talk about some of the cool stuff you all do, right? Let's talk about a, a typical game. You start with a, a baby dedication? What the heck, man? Uh, yes. Yeah, so that was one of the originals. So that's what a tradition that stayed true in Savannah. So yeah, we used to, you know, we still open every, every game with a banana baby where you lift the baby up into the uh, air in a banana costume and everyone sings, nah, Savannah, nah, here. It's, uh, the, you know, the symbolism of uh, tradition here in Banana Land. But yeah, now there's, there's 50 promotions that happen before a game, before the game starts. So, you know, from we have a weigh in between the teams, we have a parade that goes through the crowd, like a Mardi Gras parade throwing beads now. Uh, you know, we have our princess sing. We have the Manana tryout. We have a Banana Nana performance. We have uh, the home run hitter. We have our first banana, not a first pitch. Uh, you know, we have the entire uh, line after the national anthem do a, a kick line to Thunderstruck, kind of like the uh, Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Um, so there's there's a series of things because, again, friction. You look at any pre-event of a sporting event and usually everyone's just eating their food they're playing music and then finally they say all right here's our first pitch here's our first here's our starting lineup and then the game starts and we said no that's a moment that you have an opportunity to entertain people if people are sitting and just eating and bored i don't want one fan to feel bored for a minute and that's the biggest challenge i still have with the game that you came to in a lot of games a nine inning game is still too boring and too long and that's why we're attacking it with this banana ball game so um yeah, I mean, break dancing coach, third and fourth inning. Players do a different choreographed dance every single night. Uh, we have a second inning stretch instead of a seventh inning stretch where sometimes we bring out a Richard Simmons impersonator and get the whole crowd stretching and dancing in a weird way. Um, you know, we do this in the seventh inning. We actually have the entire crowd sing yellow by Coldplay. They put their flashlights up in the air now uh, and look at the stars, look how they shine for you. And it was all and the whole stadium goes yellow. And uh, hey, baby, a tradition, the whole stadium, 4,000 people plus uh, dancing to hey, baby. So it's all part of just creating a fun environment and, and making it a nonstop entertainment. Wow. Wow. So Jesse, is there ever been an idea or suggestion that's been too outlandish even for the bananas? Yes. People come to me about streakers every single day. They want streakers. I'm like, guys, we are still family friendly. We will not have intentional streakers at the stadium. And so, uh, yeah, that uh, we get on the edge, you know, we have Dolce and banana underwear, which I throw in the crowd. We have, uh, uh, you know, senior citizen, crazy some people say lap dances i don't call them lap dances but there's a lot of things that happen that are very on the edge at our ballpark we, we get there but uh hopefully we won't cross over but yeah i think the group and they always wanted me to do wild things but um we'll do most of them i mean i want to have a ball monkey at one point where a monkey delivers baseballs to the umpire and is a part of our uh, show i want to have our players skydive to their positions uh, as a starting lineup uh, there's a lot of things which there's probably lots of liabilities but uh we'll find a way around that <laughs> that's cool man so so uh yellow is your jam so how many different uh, uh yellow items do you think you have in your collection because you i saw you have what three or four tuxedos in your in your closet or you probably have I'm more up, now huh? i'm up to i'm up to seven yellow tuxedos at this point and uh yeah actually here and you probably heard some of that noise i'm literally underneath the stadium right now in the bowels of the ballpark this is our promo closet so you know the amount of yellow i mean even we all have our costumes over here. You know, we've got all of our costumes and banana babies and sun costumes and just, you know, there's, there's, a, and then there's yellow, uh, you know, toilets for musical toilets. I mean, we got a lot going on in here. So I'm showing, there's a lot of yellow in my life. 
<laughs> so does your wife love yellow too or is it just you oh no she's probably completely sick of it at this point luckily i mean i proposed to her and it was proposed to her and in this yellow tuxedo and she said yes and she, we're still married and we have three kids so you know we're we're, we're, uh, we're doing the best we can but she really prefers she goes jesse can you please not wear the yellow tux today so the days that i don't wear it is a good day for her <laughs> that's cool what about the kids man do the kids love it too or what do they you know, think funny. of dad's it, bananas it is- this is something that makes me actually tremendously proud of, of what we're doing. You know, I think of any professional sports team, whether it's basketball, football, or baseball, it's very hard to relate to them. So think about this. Like, no one can really be LeBron James. You know, it's very hard to be right. Tom Brady or to be Mike Trout or Bryce Harbour. It's very hard. So most people go to a baseball game. It's like, wow, look at these athletes and what they can do. And that's cool. But for us, you know, we have the senior citizen dance team. We have the dad bod cheerleading squad. We're now introducing the Banana Splits, which is a youth dance group that's going to be an all green because they're not quite ripe. And they finish each performance with a split. And then we have, you know, our, uh, you know, break dancing coaches. We have our pep band. And my four-year-old son, I love this about him. You know, everyone's like, oh, he's going to be playing for the Bananas. And I go, Maverick, Maverick, you want to go play baseball? You don't play baseball? He goes, no, Dad. He goes, I want to play in the Banana Pep Band. And so every game, he follows the band around and watches the saxophone player. And watches the guy on drums and he wants to play in the band. And I think about that. And it actually, you know, for a guy that's like, I played baseball in hell of life, you know, you know, you don't want the guy, you know, your son to be a jock. You know, you think about that. It's like, no, that makes me so proud because I think anybody who comes to our ballpark can find themselves in someone that's on stage with the bananas and they can relate to someone. And we have this every day. People say, I want to be on the banana nanas or say, I should be a man in on the dad bod cheerleading squad. Or, or a couple that gets married and is having a baby, they say, can we put our baby on the wait list to be a banana baby? Or, you know, all those moments. I think that's what's really cool. And so the kids love it. But uh, yeah, my, my uh, daughter wants to be a Princess Potassia because we actually have a princess in all yellow. She doesn't want it. She wants to be Princess Potassia. And my son wants to be a part of the pet band. That's incredible, man. That's super, super incredible. So, so Jesse, uh, you've got so many lessons in the book. It is fantastic, man. But it, one of the last things we talk about here is your five E's. I think they're really incredible. And I think they really set the table for businesses, right? The five E's that you run the bananas around. So which one would you say is the hardest for you to do each and every day? Because in the book, you say you do it every day. And I know that that's true. Yeah. So yeah, the, the five E's just for the listeners, it's the five E's to create raving fans. And so that's what, you know, we never had this when we first started, we just started realizing, Oh, well, we started by eliminating friction, the starting point, you know, baseball is long, slow and boring. You get nickel and dime and all the different friction points in a ballpark experience. The number two, entertain always. How do you find every moment to entertain, you know, whether it's a video you send in advance or a playlist of music to listen to on the way to the ballpark or now, which the book was already written by the point. Now we send a music video a week after you come to a game to by bare naked ladies, but we made it our own spoof. It's, it's been one week since you saw us play. You watch the banana and is dancing a funny way. And we actually send that. So, you know, entertain always the third one experiment constantly. Every night we do five to 10 things at the ballpark. We've never done before. A lot of them fail, but you learn faster by doing that. Uh, the fourth one, engage deeply. Do for one what you wish you could do for many, what Andy Stanley said. The fifth one, empower action. How do you empower your team to, as I say in the beginning, stop standing still to start standing out. Start trying things. Start doing things that are a little bit different. You know, as the brilliant philosopher uh, Will Farrell once said, keep throwing darts at the dartboard. You'll eventually hit the bullseye. You know, I think we need to throw more darts, come up to bat, take more swings. And so out of those, those five E's, I think, you know, they're all very difficult, um, but they're all challenging, but they're not when you put focus on them and how you view things is how you do things. And so the reality for us, I think, um, you know, the engage deeply is probably one of the bigger challenging ones because, you know, you have to really be able to narrow in and find that moment. And as we learned from Darren Ross in the book, listen carefully, respond creatively. I think we often think so big, but Hey, this fan is going through this moment. What can we do to make it special? There's, you know, 300,000 fans to work with. How do we slow down? Those are the moments that make me most proud. So between doing that and then the opposite of entertaining always, those two, if you can combine those two together, I think you can be unstoppable and create unforgettable experiences forever. Wow. That's great, Jesse. So if folks want to get started on the fans first journey, obviously they should pick up a copy of the book, check out this fan of bananas, follow them on TikTok or Instagram. 
that's where I see you guys most of the time is on Instagram. I don't play on TikTok much. But Jesse, how would they get started creating a fan's first experience for their organization, for the people that they serve? I, I think the first step is to get together with your leadership. And, you know, I, I talked about this at the beginning, but Walt Disney's vision started from him sitting at a park at Griffith Park and watching his two daughters on the carousel and saying, man, I wish there was a place that would be fun for kids and adults to have fun together. And same thing for me. I was sitting in a dugout with some of the best players in the world, the best thing in the house. I said, man, I wish baseball wasn't so boring. I wish it'd be something that could be fun nonstop. So where's your, you know, dugout bench or park bench that you can start with a vision with your team and think about what makes us different? What's going to make us special? And go all in on that. Since day one, our website has said we make baseball fun. And that's led us. And how we do it is fans first and entertain always. And so start with that vision. Once you get, hey, this is who we want to be. This is who we stand for. This is who we're not for. And you start answering those questions, then get together and have an idea palooza. Have some fun. What are some things we can test and experiment to live by that mission and vision and just try some things. Let's change up the experience. Let's do something new when people buy something from us. You know, every day someone is buying something. People are buying something. And you probably bought something today. I've probably bought something. Today. We all every day buy something. Why does it have to feel like the same everywhere else? When you buy from us, we want it to be a celebration. Often, congrats, you just made the best decision of your day. We want to make people feel good. So maybe it is get together with your team and just say, hey, find one moment that you can make someone's life a little better that fits towards your goal and vision. And then from there, once you do that once, you're going to get addicted. You're going to want to do it again and again and again. And as Walt Disney said, keep plussing and plussing and plussing. And that's when it becomes real fun. Wow. Jesse, you definitely plus it every time, man. I enjoyed our time. I hope folks get a copy of Fans First. Get to know Jesse Cole. Get to know the Savannah Bananas. Jesse, where's the best place for them to get more engaged with the book and with you? <laughs> I always tell people, go through our experience. You know, I, I, Amazon's great, and I know that's the easiest, but uh, go through us. We won't charge you shipping. We're going to send stuff. So, yeah, go to our website, and, and if you want the book or if you want to just see how we do things, uh, you know, we love to engage. And uh, we're learning. It's, uh, we've learned that it's uh, unscalable now, a lot what we're doing, because the numbers have got a lot, uh, a lot more interactions than there used to be now with over 3 million followers. But uh, we're doing our best to try to connect with our fans as much as we can. So we'd love to hear from you. I'm, I'm easiest on LinkedIn. I spend most of my time there. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate what you're putting out in the world. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesse. And folks, go get the book. Go get fans first. Get to know the Savannah Bananas. Put your fans first and outserve and keep plussing. Thanks so much for watching.